okay guys so in the last session what we have uh, discussed so something about uh, ESSIS okay that is the first session for ESSIS today we are going to discuss something about some more about this uh, ESSIS okay right so I just open this business intelligence development studio okay and uh, in the last session we have created one project right so that is msba 930 okay so where we have shaved that project on the desktop you can see msba 930 right so this is the dot solution export so you can open an ssis project from here also if you are clicking on the dot sln file it will open so inside this folder if you see there is only one package we have created in the first session that is the package emp table loading dot dtsx package okay right so i'm going to create a new package or if you want to add an existing package okay if you want to add an existing package how you can add so you just right click add existing package and from file system and what is the package path so where you have saved msva 930 so this is our package right i just add it right right so if you are double clicking on this package it will open here okay right so we can discuss one by one uh, control flow items in the toolbox okay so the first task what i'm going to uh, discuss is bulk insert task so what exactly this bulk insert task so i have a data in a text file i want to load that text file data into a target table that is sql server table okay right so by using this bulk insert task we can load the data from text file to SQL Server table. So this bulk insert task is useful only for loading the data from text file to SQL Server table, right? So for that I am going to create one text file, okay? And that I am going to put into some uh, folder in source folder, okay? Right? I am going to create one file, text file. I am going to give the name is EMP. So inside this, I'm going to put employee number, employee name, salary, 100, from 5,200, jam, 4,300, com, 6,000. Okay, so this is my text file and I'm saving this file. Okay. And in SQL Server, I'm going to create one table to load this data. Right. So in the BI demo table, I'm going to create create table. So EMP underscore SSIS. Okay, employee number, integer, employee name, where care, okay, and salary, integer. Okay, the table is created. And if you see in the table, there is no data, right? Right, there is no data. E employee number, employee name, salary. Okay, right. So by using this bulk insert task, I have to load the data from this EMP text file to this SQL server table. Okay, right. So for that we are using this bulk insert task and we have to configure this task. If you are not configuring this task, so it will show this red mark symbol. You just double click on this task. If you want to give the task name, right, right now it is showing bulk insert task only. So you have to give some meaningful name. Right, this is uh, EMP text file to emp underscore ssis okay right so come to connection part so in the connection so where is your source connection source connection in the sense so your uh, source file 
your text file location you have to specify here so where exactly your uh, text file that is emp file is uh, located in your windows machine in which folder that path you have to specify right you just click here and new connection right so usage type is existing file right so already you have existing file so if you want to create a new file then you can create new file also so i want to take this existing file and you can browse it go to desktop and in which folder we have wood source folder right source folder emp open okay right so this is the connection information this is the source connection right come to target connection so your target is an sql server table right so you have to give that server name that sql server name and username password and the particular database name you have to provide in the connection so you just click here take new connection okay right if you have already created a connection then it will come here okay so if you want to create a new connection just click new and uh, so here if you are coming here providers so these are the providers to connect to the different different data sources okay so for example if you want to connect to the sql server you can use sql server native client 10.0 if you want to connect to the oracle then you can use microsoft oledb provider for oracle okay right click okay and the server name i don't know okay see here if you want to connect to the sql server so if you don't know the server name you just give dot right so it will take the local host dot okay so what kind of authentication you are going to use you can use any authentication right so here what, what authentication i'm using i can use any authentication a scale server or a windows authentication same you can use anyone so here i'm going to use only windows authentication so what is the database name in which database your table is existing in bi demo okay so you can uh, test the connection right the connection is succeeded so you are uh, connecting to your sql server database from this ssis by using this connection information right so what is your target table so my target table emp underscore ssis so into this table i am going to load the data okay from this file to i am going to load the data into this file Got it? Right. Okay. Next, if you are coming to yes, if you are coming to here, what is the format? Okay, you can specify that is a by default it is a specific format. Okay. What is row delimiter? What do you mean by row delimiter? The row delimiter means, for example, if you are coming to the here. right so first it will uh, insert this row okay and the cursor will come to this point okay first it will insert this row and the cursor will come this point right so right after it is reaching to here so what you are going to tell for this bulk insert task right so the row delimiter so yes the row is ended so what what is the next step for this cursor so you are going to mention so cr cr means carry return okay carry return means it will come return it will come back right the next leaf line feed crl crlf okay the row delimiter we are going to select cr lf what do you mean by cr cr means carry return okay and lf means line feed let's give a second okay so it is taking line feed means it will come to next line that is coming to 200 right so then again it is loading the entire row and it will again uh, carry return right it is carry return to again 200 and one more line lf means line feed again it is coming to 300 comma rm so 
this way you can specify the carry row delimiter okay right so what about this uh, uh, column delimiter the column delimiter how you are going to separate the columns so that is the comma value you have used right for the comma separation you are using this one okay right so this is comma separator click okay right so before that we, we are going to see some options so you can use this code page as a raw and a data file is a, a care so by default you can choose that one okay right so what about the first row and last row the first row means from which row you are going to load the data and what is the last row for example if you have a 10 rows in a file okay you have 10 rows in a file if you are giving uh, the first row is a fifth and the last row is seven that means it will load two rows only from fifth to seventh got it right so if you are giving here the first row is one that means it is trying to insert the employee number employee name salary column names also right so it is throwing error okay we'll check later right what about these options so before inserting the data into an sql server table so if you are enabling these options what are these options fire triggers so it will it will uh, fire the insert trigger if there is any insert trigger is there it will fire the insert trigger table lock table lock means until the insertion is over this entire bulk insert task lock the table so no other people okay no other transaction can't do anything and can't insert can't update anything on that particular table because it is uh, locking the table until this insertion is over so once this insertion is over then only it will release that table and other resources can use that table so identity column you know right and keep null values and check constraints if there is any check constraints it will check out if you want to sort the data you can uh, mention that column name and which column you are going to sorting okay right click ok now I am going to execute this one so before you are going to execute so you have to check out one option so go to solution and come to debugging run 64 bit runtime it is a true that means you have to make it false if you are making it false that means this business intelligence development studio is going to run under 32 bit run motion so you have to run in 32 bit run motion because so in 64 bit runtime some of the functionalities are not accepting so the excel sheet for example excel sheet it is not recognizing excel provider is not supporting for 64 bit runtime so that's why so you have to make always it is false apply click ok right if you want to execute this task only you just right click on the task execute or if you want to execute the entire package right click on execute the package if it is a success it will show green fail red the yellow means under process right it is getting failure message right we'll check first whether the data is inserted or not yes the data inserted but it is getting failure message the reason is so it is inserted three rows but the bulk load data conversion error the data conversion error why it is coming because the first row is all where cats right so this is a column name actually but it is considering this is also one row so you can delete that row and you can insert again or what you want to do so how to stop the, this debugging mode right now this is in debugging mode execution mode if you want to stop this one how we can stop you can click here stop debugging mode okay right so what I'm going to do here I'm going to put this option as 2 2 means insert from the second row okay right I'm going to truncate the data truncate table 
emp underscore ssis right I, right now i don't have any data okay right now i am going to execute this if it is a success then a green Fail red. Yellow means under process. Yes. Green color is coming. We'll check whether the data is inserted or not. Right. Three rows are coming. Got it. So in this way, by using this bulk insert task, we can load the data from a, a text file to target SQL server table. So this task is useful only from text file to an SQL server table. So in what kind of scenarios we are using this bulk insert task? For example, if you have a lot of data in your uh, text file, so you can use this bulk insert task. It will give uh, uh, very uh, nice performance. Okay, it is. It will uh, insert the data uh, in a short spam of time. Okay, right. So try to prefer this one whenever you are going to load any text file information, bulk bulk information. It's a lot of information. Okay, right. So the next one, uh, the file is loaded, right? So after that, I want to delete this file. After that, I want to delete this file or I want to copy this file into another folder or I want to move this fo file into another folder or I want to create a, a directory or I want to create a folder. So these kind of uh, operations if you want to do, so you have to use file system task right so this is the file system task okay so my, my, my agenda is the first i want to execute this task i want to load the data and then after if it is getting success then i have to execute this file system task okay double click on this okay i'm going to configure this one so what is your operation so what kind of operation you are going to do you want to copy the file or you want to delete the file or you want to move the file move means cut and paste copy means cut and copy paste right right so i'm going to move the file from which folder so that connection you have to tell here source connection right so you have already source connection so you have created that emp.txt connection right so for the bulk insert task so that connection you can use so whatever the connections you have created that connections come here see this is a text file connection emp file connection and this is a sql server connection you can see here this is the server and windows authentication database name test connection right so whatever the connections you have created here those connections come here under here so this is the connections area connection strings area this is the text file connection and this is sql connection sql server table connection got it right so i'm going to configure this one right if you see the observer under the source connection there are two options one is is source path variable each source path variable means so this connection the source connection information are you going to uh, take new connection here or if you want to put in a variable the path so the path of this file is this one right so are you going to put in a variable right i'm going to create one variable variables Click here this is the source file path and the data type is string data type and the value is this path hyphen emp dot txt got it right so if you are coming to here so instead of uh, taking a new connection or existing connection if you want to put a true that means is source path variable your source you are going to mention in a variable right so what is the variable name so that variable name is source file path so this variable having the path of the this variable having 
this path right so in that particular path i have my file right so the same way if you want to create for the destination path also if you are making way true then you have to create one variable for destination also and you have to give that variable name if you don't want to give any variable name then you can uh, uh, directly take that connection okay right so i don't want to take any variable i want to create a connection so new connection so in which folder you are going to move if you want to create a folder okay fine you can create a new folder and if you uh, if you have already existing folder you can browse it so to which folder you are going to put it i am going to put in destination folder the my folder name is destination so from this folder to that file i am going to copy into this destination folder okay i going to do the copying no i want to do move file okay click and one more option is overwrite destination so if you have already existing in a file in that particular location then uh, you have to use if you want to overwrite just make it true okay right just click okay so if you want to execute only this task if you want to execute only this task you just right click and execute success this is getting success right so you can see right in the source folder you don't have that file it is moved to the destination we'll check in the destination folder yes the mp emp file is coming to destination file if you want to delete that file so how to stop the debugging we have to click here okay right so if if you are executing this one let's give it a second right so if you want to delete that file in a target folder so you have to select delete file okay where you are going to delete this so i want to delete in the location like and make it false Let's say new connection i am going to take and existing file what is the location the destination this file i'm going to delete click okay okay right right click execute got it it's uh, deleted so you can't see any file here right so this way you can uh, use this file system task and uh, based on the operations you have to specify the source and targets okay you can uh, copy a directory copy directory means entire folder you can copy and you can copy a file from one location to another location and you can create a directory okay and you can delete a directory and you can delete directory contain 
direct content means it will delete inside the folder it is not deleting the folder okay it will delete just inside a folder and it will delete a file if you want to move a directory that means cut and paste and move a file that is cut and paste a file rename a file you can rename the file also and so these are the main option the main purpose of this uh, file system task is if you want to move the files from one location to another for file uh, one another folder or if you want to delete a file or if you want to create a folder so these are the main three usages we are using this file system task so once your files is loading is over so you are just moving that files into another location if you want to copy from uh, files one place to another place so you just use this file system task right so if all the files are existing in your machine then you can uh, in your windows folder somewhere right so you can easily do by using file system task so for example sometimes that sometimes the tasks are in the files are in located in remote connection okay files are located in remote connection so in that kind of scenarios how you can copy the files how you can download the files right there is an ftp connection okay so for that i'm going to use ftp task so both are same but the difference is so this file system task can do the file operations on local system this ftp task can work on remote connections okay sometimes the clients will do they are uh, putting the, those files in some ftp site that is a file transfer protocol site right so how it looks i will show you so if you are coming to see this one so that system admin guys will create this ftp connection okay so if you want to open this ftp you just write down ftp and the server name so local host means that is a local server it is taking okay so if you know the server name you can put server name so once you are typing this one it will uh, show this window and before that it will ask a username and password so you have to provide that username and password and you can log into this machine so here you can see some of the files okay so you can download all these files from this ftp connection by using ftp task okay. so how to configure this ftp task so you have to give the ftp connection here so you can create a new connection this is a file transfer protocol uh, connection right so here you have to give the server name so right now i don't have any server so you have to provide the server name so whenever you are going to configure this one the system admin guys or the client will provide this ftp server name and the port number is a default 21 and if you have username and password and they will provide you just test connection okay so it's the connection will fail definitely because this is not a proper server name right so you just click okay and if you are coming to the file transfer so here you can see what kind of operation you are going to do you want to send a files the sending file means so you want to upload the files into ftp server so from that server anybody can take the files or if you want to receive the files receive the files means you can uh, download the files from uh, ftp server the client daily he will put some files in ftp folder so from that folder you can download the files that operation is receive files got it so these are the parameters like is remote path variable that means the same way how you are configured for the file system task is source is a variable so in that situation you have created one variable and you are putting that path in a variable right if you are taking this is a path that means that path you have to specify here what is the remote path so right now you don't have the proper server name so you can't connect to your source here right so once you are connecting to once you are connecting to this uh, ftp connection then uh, if whenever you are clicking here it will open the ftp folder locations 
and the file location it just give the file the full file path and if you are coming to here this is the local path okay from here you are going to download the files and paste here in download into put into this local path so what is your local path right so we are clicking here and you can give the your no, local machine connection right in which folder you are going to save here i am going to save in destination file so this way you can do any kind of offer. if you want to overwrite the file then you can overwrite True. so this is the source connection this is the ftp connection from ftp server this is your local local machine connection okay in particular folder you can save all this information understood so this way you can use ftp connection by using this ftp connection you can download Got it? If you want to disable this uh, SSIS package, sorry, SSIS task, you can right click and disable. If you want to enable, you can enable. If you are disabling this one, so whenever you are executing this SSIS total package, it is not executing this FTP task. It is executing just the first two tasks only. So it is uh, failing here. The reason there is no file is located in the source folder. There is no file located EMP file, so that is why it is in failure, failure here. So it is failuring and it is not coming to here, right? It is stopping the execution here because so once the this task is getting success, then only you have to move into this next task. So that you have to mention in precedence constraints. If you are making it is failure, right? Even it is getting a failure, so you have to execute the second task. Right now, I am going to execute. Got it. So the first one is getting failure. This is fail, but still it is executing this one. The reason is in this precedence constraint, we have mentioned the the uh, the constant is failure. Even the first task is failure, you have to jump into the second task and you can execute it. Got it? So, right. If you see in this table, you have this data. I want to truncate this data from this table. Before I am going to load uh, a text file uh, data, Okay, I want to truncate this data. How you can truncate a, a table data from SSIS? Not only the truncation, how you can execute any kind of SQL statements, whether it is an insert statement or whether it is a uh, truncate statement or whether it is a select statement, any kind of or it is a stored procedure. So any kind of SQL statements, how you can execute from this SSIS to SQL Server Management Studio. So by using execute SQL task. Okay, by using this task, you can run can execute any kind of SQL statements right so I'm going to configure this one I want to truncate the data right so the connection type you have to take so here if you observe there is a different different kind of connections okay but I want to do this for OLEDB connection and the connection is already here so you have created already for uh, EMP underscore SSIS so if you want to create a new connection, you can create the new connection. If you want to use the existing one connection, you can click OK. 
and the SQL the statement you have to write down right so if you see the SQL source type is so if you are making it as a direct input that means you have to write down the statement here direct statement truncate table EMP underscore SSIS and if you are taking the next option uh, file connection that means so whatever the statement you are going to write down here that statement you can save in some other query see so this is one uh, dot txt file so in this file i have saved this truncate table emp underscore ssis so this file connection i'm going to give here okay that file connection i'm going to give here existing file desktop source query right so in this way you can mention that uh, truncate statement instead of writing direct sql statement you can save in some other file and you can uh, give the path of that file so what is the usage of this option the usage of this option is you can if you want to modify this query so you can modify here and save it no need to open this SSIS package and no need to modify this SQL statement here. You just open this SS, uh, open this core text file and you can uh, modify and you can save it. Got it? Right. So and another option is if you want to use a variable, that means you have to create a variable. Okay. You can create a variable from here also. In that variable, you can uh, write down that uh, query. Truncate table emp underscore ssis. And the variable name is query. The data type is string. Click OK. See, in this particular variable, you are saving the query. The variable name is query variable. Got it? Right. So I'm going to execute this one. Okay. Right click. If you want to execute only this task, just right click and execute the task. Okay, it is executed. Got it? So we'll check whether the data is truncated or not. Right, the data is truncated. It is executing successfully because that it is showing a green signal, and we have to check out the data also. Got it? So you have to stop the debugging. Right. So what I'm going to do here? So I want to write down one statement that is uh, yes, select employee name from EMP table where EMP number equal to so I'm going to give this number see this is coming Blake so whenever you are executing this one this Blake value is coming so what I'm going to do here so I want to save whatever the value is coming from this query into one variable i want to save the result so if i am executing this sql statement by using execute sql task i want to save that information whatever the information here it is coming blake right so this blake value i am going to save into one variable this result set i am going to save into one variable and also so instead of giving this static value i want to pass a input parameter value i want to pass input parameter value so instead of giving 78 if i am giving a input parameter value we can change uh, any time okay right so how to mention a input parameter value in ssis execute sql task you have to put question mark symbol 
control C open it and in the query so I'm going to take it is a direct input and I'm going to put here select employee name from EMP table where EMP number equal to that is input parameter value so I don't know what value I'm going to pass so right now I, did, I didn't decide so this is the employee number I want to pass okay that's why I'm putting an input parameter value click OK right so what result is coming from this query so the result type we have to set here if that query is not returning any data you just put none if it is returning single row single row means single value say single value if it returns you have to select single value right it is returning just Blake the value is Blake so this is the input parameter value for this parameter you have to pass any uh, employee number right so that employee number I'm going to mapping here parameter mappings okay in the parameter mappings if you observe here so I want to save an employee number in a variable so from that variable I want to pass as a input parameter okay right I'm going to create a variable so you just add so from here you can create a new variable the variable name is EMP number and the data type is integer data type and the value what kind of value we are going to pass so I want to pass double seven double eight okay click OK and the direction this is a input parameter right right so what is the data type whatever the what what kind of value you are going to pass so you can make it integer also or you can make it uh, uh, long also okay right if you are coming to here so what is the parameter name so you actually have given only question mark symbol right so there is no parameter name for that one so you have to give zero what do you mean by zero so this is 0 and the next parameter value 1 and the next parameter value 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So in this way, if you have as many number of parameters, for example, if you have uh, 3 parameters, so for those 3 parameters, we have given 0 and uh, for the next one, 1 and for the next one, 2 right so for the first first one that means EMP number okay if you have this uh, EMP number equal to question mark that means first parameter that is 0 so which value we are going to pass I am going to pass employee number that employee number is existing in which variable employee number variable if you are writing and employee name equal to and one more input parameter so you have to come to here and add one more parameter so for this one I'm going to create a variable for employee name this is a string Blake and here you have to give one got it so this is the way you can pass an input parameters for this query okay so there are two question mark symbols and each question mark symbol you are passing an input parameter values from these two variables so these two variables having a values input values so that's why we are mapping this employee number is equal to 0 0 means so in the query the first question mark is for employee number parameter so that's why employee number variable I have to map for first one got it so what about the results values come again not static like you are giving the values right you are giving them like employee yes. name yeah for the parameter yeah. I have to use the values see if you see go to variables so you have I have created two variables here employee number employee name right double seven double eight Blake value so instead of mentioning the static values here so you can mention the static values here also the same value whatever the value is there the employee number value double seven double eight right 
So instead of putting the static value, I'm going to keep, I'm going to map to this variable. This value to this variable. And this value to this variable. So instead of opening this execute SQL task, okay, and changing the static values, you can change the values here. You can change the values here only. In the variables, you can change the value. That value reflect in this execute SQL task. So then what is the usage? So, so instead of changing this in the variables, you can change here also, right? You can you can get the, this kind of uh, question. So the thing is, so these variable values we are going to save in some configuration files. So from that file, you can change the value that will reflect in SSIS package. So no need to open this uh, business intelligence development studio. No need to change anything inside here. If you are changing the variable value in configuration file, that value is reflecting in these variables and this variable value is reflecting in these parameter mappings. Got it? So what about this result set? So there is something result is coming, right? So once this is execution is over, some result is coming. So that result you are going to map here in the result set. Add. Okay. And what is the column name? So here if you observe, select employee name is the value for the column name. So you can give the employee name also or you can give zero also. In which variable you are going to save this one? I want to create. This is a employee name result. So in this variable I am going to save the value. Click OK. Right. So this double seven double eight. Double seven. That is caught right. Right. Control C. Here I am going to be Scott. Select employee name or you can put a job also instead of employee name. You can put job. Instead of this employee name, you can put job here. Click OK. Click OK. Right? Now I am going to execute. Getting failure. So you can check here. So execute in the query select job from the EMP where employee number employee name failed with the following. An error occurred extract in the result variable type db type right so the data type is something mismatch for the parameter so in the parameters see this employee name is a var care data type but if you are selecting here it is a long data type so you can select var care click ok now i am going to execute got it success but you, where you can see that uh, ename result, that value, whatever the job type value is coming here and that result you are storing in this variable. So how you can see and how you can execute a stored processor inside this uh, execute SQL task. So these things we can see in the tomorrow session by using script task. By using the script task, you can display the value, whatever the value you have stored in this variable. Okay. So for that, we have to write down small dot net code. Okay. So this is about the today's session. So any any doubts, guys?